Now they want to go after Syria. It's now admitted the U.S., Israel, and others are staging giant military attacks inside Iran. Uh, what do you make of Congress not being consulted on that? Well, unfortunately, that's been happening for a long time, and Congress is just totally negligent uh, on this. And, you know, the other night when they were talking about this in the debates, you know, on what the president's responsibility is, is when they, um, you know, shoot down or are able to get one of our drones. And the, the argument was, should we go in and get it, or should we just go in and, and, and destroy it? And I tried to get attention on that. I, my, my suggestion would be, why don't we avoid it by not sending drones over a sovereign nation just looking for a problem to start another war? I mean, they never talked about, you know, the lack of wisdom of having been over there and losing a drone over a foreign nation, which we consider an enemy. I, I just think that is uh, the, it's a reflection of a policy that has to be changed. Uh, what's your view on the NDAA and, and uh, the end of posse commentatus and the declaration of the whole world as a battlefield? Yeah, well, I think the significant difference is not so much in what they have done, but the announcement and the arrogance of it all that they actually put it into law. You know our government's been involved with our CIA and involvement in overthrowing governments and this for a long, long time. And, of course, last uh, spring, I guess it was in February, where the administration admitted that they could assassinate American citizens. And now they're putting it into law. So this, this to me, is an extremely uh, wrong way to go. This is, this, this is a giant step. This should be the biggest news going right now. It's, it's literally uh, legalizing martial law. And yet, you know, in our debates, how often does it come up? It didn't come up at all. Uh, you know, and then the arrogance, and, and this is the one thing Rand got stopped, the arrogance of them trying to could push through on their voice vote that if you go through a trial and found innocent, the government wants the right to put you in prison for life anyway. And fortunately, that, they wanted to do that in voice vote, and he finally got a vote on that, and that was canceled out. But uh, that, that is arrogance of the administration and neglect of the Congress in using their authority and responsibility, as well as the people. That's why it's up to so many of us now to wake the people up, because they don't probably realize the significance of it. But this is big. This is big. You know, the monetary issue is big, all these things I've talked about. But this, this step where they can literally arrest American people, uh, American citizens, and put them away without a trial. And, and you heard Lindsey Graham say, well, if they ask for a lawyer, tell them no lawyer for you. I mean, that is arrogant and bold and dangerous. Uh, let's hope and pray that we can get that kind of stuff reversed. Uh, Congressman, we've only got a few minutes left with you here, and I wanted to continue uh, looking at the presidential race. What would be the first three things that you would do, the, the first three goals, when you got into office, when you were sworn in uh, in January of 2013? Well, there, there, are, there are three big goals, but you might not be able to do as much all by yourself the first uh, few days. But you could change the foreign policy immediately and send a message to the world that we are not looking for more wars. We are looking for, uh, you know, a more peaceful solution to, to the problems. And that is to start bringing our troops home, which would send a message that that money is going to be spent at home instead of overseas. Might send a message to the market that things will be different. But then other, other than that, then we would be working on the budget to cut the spending. You know, my proposal that uh, if, we, if we're serious about this, we have to cut the budget. I want to cut it first year at $2 trillion. And the other thing that must be changed is curtailing the power of the Federal Reserve to monetize debt and uh, get something passed where we can either or or both, you know, restrain the Federal Reserve to act on its own, to print trillions and trillions of dollars and bailing out everybody around the world, as well as a thorough audit of the Federal Reserve and then find out, uh, you, you know, find out exactly what they have been doing and, and, and then aim for legalizing the competing currency. Some of those, those messages, if, if we change our foreign policy, bring our troops home, balance, start balancing the budget, uh, it, you, you know, you don't have to wait for everything to be perfect. It's just the direction we're going. We, people might say, hey, you know, this is different. And maybe some optimism would come back, which we need a lot of. Beautifully said. Um what can we do on the campaign trail briefly? And then finally, I, I know you've written a piece today that's on your congressional site. It's also on Infowars.com about uh, forced uh, drug uh, mm -hmm. uh, research where they're trying to psychologically screen the kids. Internet kill switch admitted in the Washington Post. All of this is happening. But what can we do 
uh, to ensure that you win in Iowa, Congressman, in closing? Well, let's continue to do what we're doing. And uh, if they're not involved, anybody's not involved, want to go to uh, Ron Paul 2012 and uh, find out because people can phone from home. Uh, they certainly can raise funds. People can are going out to Iowa. There's activity, but there's a lot of electronic uh, uh, activity going on, you know, with uh, automatic phoning and different things that's done. This is uh, very, very important. So uh, we're, we're in the last the lap here right now, so it's very important that we get maximum effort made. I was about to say, now is the time for the maximum effort, and certainly I'm glad you ran again. Look at the incredible effect you and others have had since your last run four years ago. You've got a real shot if people believe and take action. Congressman Ron Paul, thank you so much for spending time with us, and go with God. Thank you, Alex. Bye -bye. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Wow, there goes Congressman Ron Paul joining us today. What an amazing interview. I got to most of my questions, uh, but I wanted to ask him, of course, and next time we have him on, uh, I'm going to ask him, what's going to happen if he doesn't win? I mean, what's going to happen if the New World Order continues? The world government's now admitted. You can't be laughed at anymore about banker takeovers with Time and Newsweek saying, Bank of the World, you know, Goldman Sachs takes over Europe, austerity for all. Uh, Internet kill switches, the Washington Post last night, headline, Internet kill switches here. Uh, the Hill newspaper, selective Internet kill switch. I mean, it's here. EAS alert takeover yesterday on major phone systems with, with government announcements. I mean, they're really getting us ready for it. Uh, absolutely incredible. Uh, here's the headline, MPAA head Chris Dodd on online censorship bill. China's the model. How many years did I write articles with the headline? This is the Weekly Standard. How many times did I write the headline in articles that it's China is the model? This is the Chinese model. There's the Weekly Standard. Uh, here's another one. Google chairman says online piracy bill would criminalize the Internet. That's the Hill. Here's overkill on Internet piracy. Washington Post goes on to say it is an Internet kill switch. Here's another one. Internet privacy bill, a bill to kill free speech, a free speech kill switch. That's the Hill as well. Wow, incredible. That was our interview with Congressman Ron Paul. You are insane if you don't get behind Ron Paul. You are under mind control if you don't believe he can win. I heard Jeff Ward yesterday, local top talk show host in his time slot on 590 that we're on as well. Good guy, former UT kicker, you know, NFL guy, smart guy, teaches at UT. And I heard him say, too bad Ron Paul can't win because I really like him. And callers called in and said, they say he can't win. He goes, yeah, the establishment doesn't want him. That's a mind trick. That's a mind game. And I hear national hosts saying it, other local hosts. I see it everywhere. This mantra of them saying you can't have freedom. That's like an enemy psyop to say you can't win. You have been defeated. We are the Borg. You will be assimilated. Resistance is futile. Your resistance is futile, tyrants. All your high-tech crud and all your mind control and all your semantical manipulations fail the minute people are awake to your scam. Doesn't matter how fancy it is anymore. When you know it's an illusion, the illusion falls. And it's time for people to break that trance. It's time for people to come out of your trance and wake up. Get behind Ron Paul, ladies and gentlemen. You can hear the energy in his voice. Get behind liberty, because win, lose, or draw, we win because resistance is victory.